Hello and welcome to Nikolai's genetics lessons and here's a question. What pattern of inheritance does the straight follow? And here's a pedigree. And probably most of you would say that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder, but there are two explanations for this pedigree and autosomal recessive genetic disorder is not most probable. So I will show you two variants and the second variant would be more probable, but let's first assume that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder. In this case, uh, this person number one is going to be homozygous recessive. And this person number two can be of the normal genotype and phenotype. And that means that all the children have to be obligate carriers, but will show normal phenotype. As you see this couple here, phenotypically normal, but have affected children. That means that uh, this person here have to be a carrier. So show normal phenotype, but have to have recessive allele. And that means that parents here have to be, one can be of the normal genotype and another one can be a carrier. So in this case, all of their children would show normal phenotype but can be a carrier. If two parents are carriers, then in this case we can expect, take a look, one parent carrier, another carrier, and we draw simple Punnett square, and take a look, capital A, capital A here, capital A, small a here, capital A, small a here, and small a, small a a here. So we expect that one quarter of the progeny are going to be affected. Let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we see that three uh, children here are affected. So it's about a quarter. It's close to a quarter. We shouldn't get exact number because we cannot get for example, out of 10 children, two and a half children. So it can be two, it can be three. So if we assume that this is autosomal recessive genetic disorder, then these people here have to be homozygous recessive. And the sibling can be of any genotype. We just know for sure that they at least have one dominant allele. It can be two dominant alleles, but only one would be enough for them to show normal phenotype. So we put dominant A and blank space. Second allele can be any, recessive or dominant. But actually this is not the best model that describes this inheritance pattern. Take a look, we have some peculiarities here. For example, in this couple, only male affected. None of his children are affected. And in this generation, only males are affected. So it is much easier to explain that uh, mutation happens only on one side of the family, on this side, and not on both sides. It is much more probable that only here one mutation. And this mutation in this person who is a male, and we can explain this pattern with X-link recessive genetic disorder. So this is going to be genotype of this person, defective X chromosome and normal Y chromosome. Normal X and X for his spouse. So for the children from mother's side, this male is going to get normal X chromosome and from the father's side, normal Y chromosome. The same is true for this male. And as for the females, from the father's side, they are going to get defective X chromosome and second chromosome from the mother's side is going to be normal X chromosome. It doesn't matter which one. With this mode of inheritance, we assume that everyone on this side of the family has normal genotype and normal phenotype. So X, X and X, X here. So this person is phenotypically and genotypically normal this person is phenotypically normal, but she is a carrier. So what's going to happen in their children? The son is affected. That means that he got from the father's side 
this normal Y chromosome and from the mother side he got this defective X chromosome. So his genotype is defective X and normal Y and because males are hemizygous he shows this genetic disorder. The same is true for this male. From the father side he got normal Y chromosome, from the mother side defective X chromosome. And the same is true here. All males, by the way, are going to get normal Y chromosome from their father. But half of the males are going to get defective X chromosome from their mother side and another half of the males are going to get normal X chromosome from their mother side. So this is exactly what we see that 50% of the males in this generation are affected and 50 are not affected. And no matter what these daughters are going to get from the mother side, whether this defective X chromosome or normal chromosome X, we know for sure that from father side they only can get normal X chromosome. So we know for sure that they should have at least one normal X chromosome and second chromosome can be any. It can be normal, it can be defective X chromosome or normal X chromosome. Still, all the females in this generation are going to show normal phenotype. 50% of the males would show also normal phenotype and only males in this generation are going to be affected which would uh, make 50% of the male progeny. So as you see we can explain this pattern with two modes of inheritance but in the first one we have to assume that uh, genetic disorder happens on both sides of the families and doesn't explain uh, this pattern though it's also possible but much more possible that this is X-link recessive genetic disorder. We would see the picture like this. It almost ideally follows this pattern. And this is all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next video. Goodbye.